What is VO2 Max? We've got wearable devices these days that try to tell us our VO2 Max after every session. So VO2 Max is the maximal rate you can utilize oxygen to produce energy for mechanical work. So that's exercise. Then you have VO2, which just is the measure of oxygen required to undertake a particular task. So if you are able to run a 40 minute 10 kilometer, you're not doing that at your peak maximal aerobic capacity, you're doing it slightly below that. So you'll have a VO2, an oxygen requirement to run those four minute Ks, and then you can use that to compare as a percentage to your VO2 max. Your VO2 max can help kind of predict your 10 kilometer or any running, cycling, power output race time. Now VO2 is measured in liters per minute, that's liters of oxygen per minute, or mils of oxygen per kg per minute. So that's relative, relative to body weight. We're all different sizes. So a larger person with a larger muscle mass is going to use a lot more oxygen. So if you compare a 50 kg female with an 80 kg male and you just look at liters per minute, the 80 kg male is gonna utilize a lot more oxygen per minute in an absolute term compared to a relative term if you include the kgs in there. And that's where mils per kg per minute is the most used term for VO2 or VO2 max. VO2 max is influenced by some key processes within the whole uh, physiological chain. So first off, we have ventilation. Now ventilation is breathing. <gasps> Breathe in, oxygen, breathe out, oxygen, and CO2. So the unused oxygen we breathe off. That is not limiting in endurance sports because we're not restricted in the amount of oxygen we can get in. Only potentially if you're at like 10,000 meters altitude. What becomes limiting then is transferring the oxygen that we breathe in from our lungs into our bloodstream. So that's the pulmonary O2 diffusion, getting oxygen from our lungs into our blood and that comes down to a pressure gradient and the amount of red blood cells we have in our system. Once we get our oxygen into our blood we need to transport it around and that really relies a lot on our cardiac output and our red blood cell concentration. So one of the reasons people have taken EPO or take EPO uh, is to increase the red blood cell count increase the amount of oxygen carrying capacity, but we still need to transport that around our system, our physiological system. So we do that by cardiac output. We can increase our heart rate to increase the blood flow, and we can also increase the amount of blood we have in our system to transport that around. Those two things influence our cardiac output, so stroke volume and heart rate. Now we get the blood to the working muscle through whatever means necessary, we need to get the oxygen out of the blood and into the working muscle. Again, that comes down to pressure gradients and the amount of myoglobin and hemoglobin we have in our system. Hemoglobin carries oxygen in the blood, myoglobin carries oxygen in the tissue, and specifically in this case, the muscle cell. Once we can get the oxygen out of the blood into the muscle cell, we then undergo oxidative phosphorylation. And that is the process of converting oxygen into a usable energy source for the muscle, and that's ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So we utilize oxygen, convert it into water, heat, and also a usable form of energy in adenosine triphosphate. And those are the factors that influence VO2, so the requirement of oxygen for a certain task, and also our peak or max oxygen uptake for undergoing a task. So that is VO2 Max. Till next time guys, happy training.